Alrighty then. So I'm gonna throw up. Where's the other thing? <laughs> oh no, I lost a I lost a doodad. What happened to my doodad? I had a nice cool little There it is. I don't know why that's called that. Alright, cool. Now I got something other than just black to look at. <laughs> the darkness of nothing. Okay. Against black. <laughs> yeah, maybe black was better, because now I can see all the artifacts in my green screen. <laughs> Nothing's perfect. Oh well, I gotta learn not to care. All right, so hello everyone and no one out there. This is yet another attempt at some kind of a talk show. I am Tyler and joining with me again is Even Star Long to make things more interesting. Hello Even. Hi Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what are the what are the first couple of uh, features that come to mind when you hear the word dragon? Scale? <laughs> Yeah, I like scales. I think those make me super happy. Uh, I guess like fire and talons. And then the rest kind of come and go depending on the mood that I'm in. Whether or not it, like, it pops into like whiskers or wings or I don't know, any of those other bits. So the first... <clears throat> so if you had the list, of what, were the, what would be the first three features that would just immediately pop into your head? So you said scales is one, I guess. Scales. If I had to pigeonhole you into a feature. <laughs> claws. Fire. Scales, claws, fire. Ooh. All right. Um, the first couple that would pop into my head are uh, definitely fire. Uh, the horns, mostly the uh, cranial horns. And... <laughs> as opposed to the other porns well because in in digging up a bunch of images for this for this session in particular i found that um there are a lot of other places where you can put spines <laughs> of of sorts in places uh, i'd love to, to see the description of when the horns become spines because for me those seem very different but I feel like it's a size. I feel like they're the same, but it's just a size difference. All right, all right. But I'm sure you can find a biologist out there that'll immediately argue with me on that point. Um, and then, so let's start easing things in uh, with one of the harder questions of the evening. What is the first um what was your first exposure to the dragon to the dragon <laughs> well i was farming and then it flew <laughs> over the hill and it, and it ruined my cabbages <laughs> really the first dragon that i think i no there's got to be so many like I can't. I can't. I can't even really fathom. Yeah. I think like the earliest one that I was like, yeah, that's a cool dragon. Was, <laughs> like maybe Power Rangers? With that, like, I don't know. I, I guess it was a dragon. Oh, yeah. It was more of a Godzilla esque thing. But yeah, I guess that does count as like a. So I'm glad you brought that up though, because that was going to be one of my little toss ins was um, the very early black and white Godzilla features because that guy never really struck to me as like a like a like a dinosaur too much plus the minute it started spitting lasers out of its face then <laughs> uh it immediately was just like hmm dinosaurs don't do that and i'm a five-year-old kid i'm in, i'm enamored with <laughs> i'm enamored with these things with dinosaurs um but then i sat and thought for a little while and I also considered that the first few films that I probably saw were um, like probably Sleeping Beauty with um, Maleficent. 
in her hmm. in her final form. Yeah, that could have happened. And then there was also the Mad Madam Mim of Sword in the Stone. I feel like not a lot of people remember that one. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a good battle. <laughs> Shape changer should be be more interesting. I wish that was a thing that uh, Wizards of the Coast stole for like alternative ways for wizards to do battle instead of just like, I want to deal as much damage as possible. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think, I think you'd ruin so many good sessions by like uh, the canon. All right, so how do you deal with diplomacy? Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> And then, so yeah, so speaking of Wizards of the Coast, though, so they have their own renditions of the dragon, and it's very quite classical to what people would assume to be as the European dragon. So we should address that there are two different types of dragons generally, like there's two general Godzilla general, and then the <laughs> general right? shapes of dragons. So yeah, so there's the Eastern... There's the eastern four-legged, four-legged winged creature, and then usually the eastern noodle dragons, <laughs> with everything in between. How would you love that in Harry Potter, where, like where they're choosing their dragons? You get the four-legged thing, and you get the eastern noodle. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be very appropriate for who was usually saying the stuff, because. You know, I think even then when they were like, oh, it's the Eastern Whiplash Dragon, like they were just like, eh, I don't really, that name doesn't sound too too horrible. And they were like, uh, you should probably watch out. <laughs> Thanks fast and it spits fire. <laughs> spits out fire. This one is wiggly and is good with, uh, with various kinds of dressings. I don't know. <laughs> don't. Oh, man, there we go. That's a good dragon. Lasers out of its face. <laughs> I was wondering what you were doing there. I was like, what? That's a weird, I don't know. I didn't know what you were talking about. So <laughs> I like this, like, like this rendition. It's gonna be hard not to, not to really hope that this is what I dream about when I fall asleep tonight. Oh, uh, that's what I forgot to include. I forgot to include a, uh, Forgot to include a uh, ubiquitous Mushu noodle dragon. <laughs> Darn it. Uh, but yeah, so also for uh, to avoid any sort of unnecessary arguing and bickering for later use, uh, we're just gonna forget, we're gonna willfully forget that there is a distinction between a wyvern and a dragon. For the purposes of this conversation, they're all the same thing. <laughs> and that's going to get a lot of anger, but I don't care because I don't want to go down that road today. I don't, I don't know. I don't know who gets that fussy about it. I don't know. Not, not until you like see one or until you're the person that's in charge of like putting their bones in the Natural History Museum. Like... <laughs> Like, I don't know, I, well, another time. Well, I want to find out where that exists anywhere besides like D&D &D and video games. Because if it exists more places, then maybe it's worth talking the about. Wyvern, but other than that, it's talking about video games or not video games. The Wyvern in, like the Wyvern specifically or the distinction between the two? Uh, I, the distinction between the two, I mm -hmm. guess is more reason, but like, I don't, I'm not sure how many things I've dealt with that did anything with, like, that had a, a wyvern in it. I don't think it was, like, a thing that was talked about. No, it wasn't really until you get into, like, the deep, until you get into the deep lore of the nerds. Yeah, when people Fuck you, nerd. <laughs> when people start to get real butt hurt about their favorite about their favorite creature, um, all 
All right. So I, I always think it's it's weird. Like both of us, like we had some like some varying other features that you're like, yeah, sure, lizards and shit. Uh, but fire, fire is a place that we both went to, which I think is so interesting because I don't know. I can't speak for you, but I really, I, I've done. So I've done a fair amount of like research and in really enjoying Eastern style dragons, but they're mostly associated with water, which is just, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like so betrayed by like how op oppressive, like just our culture is that we're like, yeah, fire. Wait, ah, uh, wait, right. Water, water. That's, that's the right answer. Like, I forgot. I did find a noodle dragon. Oh. Shenron, the, the wish giver. <laughs> if your wish is Chow Mein, then he's got it. <laughs> you know what? I think out of all of the depictions of like the Eastern Dragons, I think the Dragon Ball Z rendition is like the only one that dared to go as lengthy of like a body <laughs> as that one. Because, like, you've got it in Spirited Away, you've got it in um, Mulan, you have it in... Bushishi, I think? I think there was a really, like, a really quick <laughs> rendition of one in there. But they were all able to, like, fit, like, head to tail, like, in the screen. <laughs> and there wasn't a lot of, like, looping to be done. And then the Dragon Ball Z one's just like, yeah, it takes up multiple frames to fit its body in. <laughs> That's true. In fact, yeah. uh, I really enjoyed like, I didn't really get to watch um, just the like the original Dragon Ball. I only really got to watch the closing credits because that's what was on when I came home and I turned on the TV was it ending and then the next show beginning. And just watching Goku run along the spine of that dragon for like the entire credit roll <laughs> was just like what <laughs> it's a big dragon uh yeah, I guess that'd be weird although i don't know i don't know if we're getting trouble for stuff so i'll keep it short <laughs> but the the D, D game world eberron is cool as fuck and it's just a dragon that's wrapped in another dragon that's floating around in space with dragon bit bodies flying everywhere. That's a long ass fucking dragon. What? I've but... never, I've never heard of this creature. Yeah, <laughs> that's a super abstracted, simplified version of it all. But if you, <laughs> but here's my shameless plug: if you haven't read up on Everon, it's cool. <laughs> it's dragons wrapped upon dragons with some other dragons, <laughs> and um, then other stuff. There's uh... some elves, maybe. <laughs> There's some elves, maybe. <laughs> That sucks, because Eberron's the one where it's like, um, there's like Warforged and stuff, right? Yep. Yeah. I was, I never, I never really could get into that version of the universe too much, because it was just like too steam, it's weird to say, but it was a little too steampunky for me. <laughs> you know, and I think, all right, we're getting off topic. <laughs> it is kind of weird when you're like, you don't, uh, where do you draw the line and when are you just playing fantasy and like i don't it, when are you just playing fantasy like the traditional straight up fantasy and you're like oh right there's supposed to be some steampunk here there's a gear on my sword <laughs> yeah yeah so um so as far as features go uh i feel like the like like the super generalization is again like I feel that there's two there's two two classes of these dragons so there's eastern and western uh, but they both have very similar characteristics in the sense that a they have some method of flight even though one's more metaphorical than the other one being you know the literal I have wings um, wings singular <laughs> my dragons too if you haven't noticed well there is one relatively I don't know if he's as famous anymore, but there is one very relatively famous dragon in my childhood, at least, that had only one wing, and he's has s f's curved shapes and one large one large muscly arm. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. <coughs> and he's burninating all the peoples. Uh, but also like, so there's 
usually so there's usually like some kind of horn sticking out of the head somewhere uh, teeth some kind of uh, overlord type presence on things uh, I don't know if fire is always present in the eastern versions like I know there's like a few that are like oh yeah it totally breathes fire I don't I don't think so I like even if you look at most of the traditional art uh, I don't I can't think of very many uh, like almost any representation in, in like traditional paintings of dragons in like Chinese or Japanese uh, traditions that actually have fire associated with it. well the only the only thing that I relate that to is the fact that um, the the Chinese firework like attributed the the power you know the fire power as a as an attribute of the dragon and so they you know shove the head on the on the tips of their of their rockets and stuff but one could also argue that it's I see noodle monsters <laughs> not because they breathe fire yeah, but one could also argue that it's not so much a representation of the fire that it spits forward from its mouth, but like it's more of a call to the, I guess, the sparkliness that it leaves behind when it flies. Um, Maybe. I don't remember what it... Oh, dang it. I wish I had favorited it, but there was a... Um, there was a really cute dragon animation that um it was it, like the story revolved around like this little like fat like this little fire festival that would come around and you know there's like these two larger dragons and they're like haha we're so much better than you know, there's the one little dragon that we're supposed to root for but it's got you know this little stuffy nose thing and it goes through this whole ordeal about how it can Kind of participate in this festival up to the level of the two older dragons. It's mm -hmm. cute and the animation's well done. I've never heard of it. Or maybe I have, but your description sucks. I'm uh, sorry. I know, because I'm also distracted in the fact that I'm looking for it right now visually. <laughs> uh, but I can't find it. Um, Spice and noodle dragon. But yeah. So. So which would you prefer, if it was real? Would you want the Chinese style dragons? Would you like the European style dragons? Or I guess we'll go to Eastern and Western. Um. Well. If the mm. <laughs> so the the eastern ones have generally been known to be less malicious, <laughs> and they tend to kind of help out and or give challenges at the at with which they can also reward <laughs> success. But the European ones, uh, in my personal opinion, I think the European ones tend to look a lot cooler in the sense that they also look a lot more violent. Um, <laughs> they tend to they tend to hoard a lot, so there's a lot more opportunity for um, getting rich. But again, they tend to be very um not good for environments <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they litter everywhere <laughs> all the european ones like driving uh, hummers i mean it's terrible all i wanted was to start a simple job just farming sheep and can't do that because there's a dick lizard out there somewhere that keeps taking all my sheep Ooh, dick lizard. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready to draw that right now, but that's a different we'll let this podcast go on for a while longer. 
that's a that's a different that's a different subject that I can't stream on this platform. <laughs> yeah. So that's what you're talking about about all those horns and places, huh? No. <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> or oh, oh, nasty. Sorry. I was like trying to think where of other places that I could make this uh this dick lizard have its various horns. What if it wasn't horns? What if it was like the mustache and beard? Yeah, so that's one thing is that when you get into the different so eventually I'm sure people got bored and they also got better at drawing and illustrating as they do. And so you get different types of dragon than just like, oh, oval body, long neck, and teeth and fire. So that's where you get other renditions like Dungeons and Dragons is black dragon, where you have now this like more webbed crest on this top. You get more design in what the horns do. And instead of breathing fire, you get the nice change-up of it spits acid. Uh, acid? Poison. I think it's acid. Which one? Black. Black one? Yeah. Acid, right? Acid. Acid, yeah. Because it's the green one. Greeny with P. <laughs> um, I'm moving around other things that I don't need to move. This one. Uh... The green, D&D's green dragon is actually very classic, I feel, except it's like the first one, or it's not the first one, but it's like the only one in the, in the repertoire of like evil dragons that don't, that doesn't really have like a head dress. <laughs> it doesn't really have like horns and stuff, but they do allow for the lore to be more like, they don't really favor head like head-on combat they're more talky they're more sly they bargain <laughs> i kind of like that idea in a dragon but some people talky? also don't like their dragon dresses <laughs> no that it has other options than just i i my only function is to bite and breathe on you with deadly materials <laughs> I'm surprised that they haven't created a dragon that's like just vomits hot metal. <laughs> I don't I don't even know. I don't know if I'd kill that one. <laughs> the hot metal dragon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vomits Hot Metal sounds like it should be like a the album name. <laughs> but still, even if it was if it was vomiting actual hot metal, it seems like like your your mission would be to capture that or like bring it a job uh uh like a job offer. More than the other ones. Like what do you do? I breathe acid. I'm like, eh, I don't know, unless we're having a stoner sesh right now. Maybe that's not so good, but like, I don't know. Maybe breathing ice would be good. It'd like be cooler, mom. <clears throat> yeah, I just I just mentioned hot metal because we have representation in all other forms with a lot of different literature, not just D and D, but um, D and D does cover a lot of the bases. So they've got the green dragon that breathes poison, the black dragon that spits acid. The blue dragon that just screams lightning at people. <laughs> Whispers a little bit of thunder sometimes. <laughs> mostly screaming lightning. <laughs> and then um, the ever popular fire breather. So I think I think Carl? breathing. So I think breathing molten metal would be an interesting twist on things so it's like it's still breathing a hot substance but it's not something you could easily defend against <laughs> i think you gotta dig because there is a whole there's like whole sections of like uh of like steel dragons and iron dragons that do a variety of other terrible things like i feel like there's like one that just like breeds uh <laughs> 
time at things, so things rust. <laughs> um, World of Warcraft has has a couple interesting concepts in which I think they do. I don't think it breathes time, but it they do like manipulate time, and then the their one main like their one flagship dragon that like breathes life at things or death. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an intense way to think of it. I breathe life at you so much that your life ends. <laughs> Here's some extra life, like, oh no, I was trying to savor it, but I guess I'll take it all right now. <laughs> I wonder if you like if you just didn't know that the next three weeks of your life were gonna be so stressful. And like a genie comes up and is like, "Oh, I'm going to, I'm gonna fast forward time for you, and then like the next like two minutes, you're gonna age like ten years, and you just die of a heart attack immediately." As like those ten years of stress within two minutes, it's just like way too much. I don't know. Like, I wonder if you get to experience it or just the emotional trauma of it all. It's like. It would be weird, like, huh, I feel happy. I wonder what happened. Uh, you'll never know. It was pretty good, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Oh, man, like, I'm super pissed off, but I'm also, like, extremely happy. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about this. Dang it. Uh, what? Just in general? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that would be the, the, the main... Uh, the main emotion if you were to just like be zipped forward in time for any reason you're just like I don't know what's causing these emotions but they're extreme and then it would be over and you'd just be like wow thanks genie <laughs> he's just like hey I got you, but only two more times. Dang it, how am I not finding it? All right, I'm gonna try to rip my way, myself away from that. Um, and then I can't remember if another medium did this, but the <laughs> it, it, it's both really interesting, but it also one could argue that it feels very lazy to do, but the, the chromatic queen herself, Tiamat, is just all of them in one body. <laughs> I mean, chimeras are pretty, pretty creepy, pretty creepy. But I don't know. I like how it's all all of her favorite ones. Just the bad, bad mom. Like, <laughs> yeah. These are the good ones, you other ones. Like, I don't know. Or maybe there's like lesser Tiamats that <clears throat> that can kind of come together in a, uh, as like the different variants. Uh, don't the, chi don't the Chimeras feature the head of the red dragon? Yep. Usually, traditionally, I don't know. Which again, a lot of a lot of interesting options on what you can change about it. It'd be weird if it was like a uh, a mix between like the European bits and the like uh, uh, and the Asian bits, where it's just like, yeah, it's part noodle on that side, yeah. and then the other parts. It is a Not little so baby much. red dragon. Um, I feel like the Chimera would get a lot of favor from Tiamat then. Because <laughs> it's like, my favorite head, plus these two other things. <laughs> plus a goat! <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's weird. In the Final Fantasy genre, the Chimera was always kind of an interesting flop as far as, like, which unit you really feared because the the dragon head it was just like eh whatever it does fire damage like I've 
many resistances to that. The lion head just did physical damage, and you were just like, eh, whatever, I can just heal that back up. But the goat head was like the scariest one of those of those three, not to mention the snake tail at the end, because it breathed this like this gas on you that had like a 35% chance of petrifying your entire party. And you were just like, why? The, the dragon head should be the scariest thing on there. But nope, is the goat. <laughs> well, maybe maybe we were thinking about this wrong. It's like the chimera is a mixture of the ferocity of a red dragon, the asshole pride of uh, a lion, a snake, because snakes, you know. And then that's actually just Satan. Like, that's Whoa, I just had a really crazy flashback from, like, chimeras and stuff. So I think... I think actually before Disney, my two, my like my three exposures to dragons were like Godzilla somewhere in there because I was exposed to that like pretty young, and it was just silly to see this thing on the screen. But also, um, the last unicorn and um, flight of dragons were probably the two earlier cartoons that I was probably exposed to from the the good old blockbuster days. <laughs> Um, cause yeah, they, they had very traditional, like the European style, like super oval body, tiny, almost non-usable, like, um, vestigial wings type of thing, but like an extre, like an extremely long neck with like a snapping mouth at the end. Yeah, like that. <laughs> And therefore, the lance was employed so that they could get past that long snapping face and strike at the balloon body and pop it. <laughs> um, what are things that you like to see in your European dragon? In my European dragon? Uh... <laughs> you know what there was this like a uh, I think the body shape is always kind of a, like a weird sort of thing when it comes to uh, drawing dragons uh, because the ones that tend to look nice are the ones that have very feline like body forms and not very lizard like body forms where they're more vertical than they are a horizontal. Like the whole like fat or flat alligator kind of look that that those like that bugs me. I don't enjoy it. But if it's more more streamlined, more cat like, then we're good, which makes it all the more weird thinking of dragons purring. But <laughs> but I definitely I, I've seen one that looked like like a, a crested not a crested, like a crested gecko. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Or bearded Bearded dragon. That that was a cool, cool dragon that looked, I don't know, husky and weird. And probably <laughs> lays around and sleeps on like metal bits for too long. So where would Haku fit in that spectrum? It has like more of a feline kind of, kind of vibe. Would you that. attribute that to the long ass whiskers or the shape of no, the no. face? Uh. Yeah. It's not so much the the face or the whiskers, uh, and it like, it's it's actually the body, uh, the body type, or how they orient themselves to to kind of like work with their muscles. So like, if I were like thinking about the way that it's constructed, like if I took like a cross section of like, there's my there's my dragon face. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those are my dragon bits. But what I want to look at is like this thing, uh, which is just its man symbol. Um, but their its body shape is a little bit more like uh, like this on that like center part. If we think like ribs coming this way, scooping back, there's the spine, and then like spine crests and stuff. And then legs are more, more down here that go back and then come to the claws. 
Mm. Whereas if we think like lizard body that I dislike, this one, its body is like more, more flat and the legs come out to the side and then down. Uh... Which I hate that. I think it looks weird. But I like cats better anyways. There's its ribs. <laughs> that, was the, that was the angriest. There's its ribs. <laughs> yeah, because I wish that they were more vertical and not these horizontal terrible things. So if I were thinking about dragons, I don't... I, I like it when when they're sleek and more cat-like. Like, I think uh, How to Train Your Dragon did the best lizard body kind of thing, but a lot of their motions were, like, super stuck on, like, the eyes, and, uh, and it did cat and dog movements, even though it has, like, a lizard-like flatness to it. Mm. Um, then how do you feel about the... Um, those dragons that have, like, the, the foo dog muzzle looking nose mouth thing <laughs> matters if it's actually a foo dog or well i mean but... you know how they just have that that like um that more big bulbousy nose than just like two little um Here, i'll try to pull up a Uh, every time I make a search, it finds me a different picture. <laughs> yeah. That kind? Yeah. Uh, it's very alligator-esque. I don't know. That one falls into the alligator, alligator <laughs> category. If I were trying to think about what it would be, like, if I were to actually see it, Alligator, crocodile, kinda. Mm. It makes sense. I don't know. I think, uh, I think since like Pacific Rim came out and stuff, I've been enjoying like the uh, the very front face nightmare kind of things um, that have their like their faces like there and the nose all extra high. Uh, very kaiju. Esque weirdness, which I guess isn't too bad. Uh, like I can't think of of an example of what what lizard things actually look like that, but not too <laughs> terrible. But I kind of like it when it's like I don't know. It reminds me of like bulldogs and like pit bulls and things. Like it's like all pushed forward and ready to bite. It's very uh. Very Tyrannosaurus Rexy. Yeah, in a way. Uh, not the Komodo dragon. <laughs> uh, okay, that's now probably the most model. interesting. No, I don't want to do that though. If it's got that thing on. Okay, so um, and then what would? you want in your European dragon. My European dragon? I thought we were talking about European dragon. Oh, sorry. But... Um, no, we were talking about Eastern. Oh. Well, either way, it's that same sort of thing where I look for, like, I think the body uh, shape. Personally, I like it more vertical than horizontal. All right, I think you cut out fairly at, like, the Eastern or Western when we were first talking. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Um, you Eastern dragons, Western dragons. I gotta say, I'm a fan of the the two legs, two wing design dragons. I think they look nice. I think they make sense to me. Like, uh, it, it takes a lot of muscle to like move wings. Uh, so it being on the back, I think is like meh. It's whatever. Kind of works. Hmm. But there's something really nice about that whole wyvern design that some people like to get all fuzzy about. But those same people that like the, the four-legged design, 
they like to have those things work as like little people hands <laughs> which like that's just weird like i don't know it's the same people that don't that probably did not do i don't know almost they're just they're just weird to me weird to me Let's me use my my blue dragon example where he's holding a little tiny rod thing. <laughs> There's also an argument as far as um, the four-legged dragon with wings being like more un like even more out of the realistic zone than um, it already yeah. than it already is than the hand wing one hand as it wing. allows for um what's it called uh it allows for more aerodynamics and just more function <laughs> mm. Mm. even though it's weird to try to talk about the realistic functions of a mythical creature <laughs> um why are we even talking then? Because <laughs> it's because I want to complain about something, so that's a perfect oh, segue. That's what we're building up. <laughs> yeah, so the entire reason why I wanted to do all this and talk about form and all this stuff is because one of the probably cooler dragons that I've seen in more of a um, high detailed modern representation uh i have i've slowly developed issues with and it's weird how it's like the longer i look at it the the more unease i feel about like why i'm i'm scared of it so i'm talking about is within elder scrolls online so they had a uh, i think it's actually a while back now but they had an elsewhere dragon release mm. in which they brought out this guy <laughs> big dragon man i'll put that in the discord if i can find it i can't find it <laughs> while you find it i'm gonna go take a piss all right so if he's doing that then i can do this Um, this one. Haha. -ha. Oops, nope, I need it. Oh, dang it. Curses. Um, ba 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 ba. Did you find it? Throw it in the Discord. I'm still juggling with. All right, here we go. Ha ha. Here, dink. <sighs> I don't get to see anything. <laughs> So this guy. Mm. Hopefully we all remember. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um back on it's gonna be rude. Okay. So he had a real so this guy had a really cool reveal. And I thought oh no. I'm back, right? So yeah. um he had a really cool reveal, and for the moments that saw him, uh, moments that we saw him, he was, uh, he was, uh, it struck me as cool, but then, like, the longer I looked at him, the more I was just like, how does he not starve to death? <laughs> so, 
my 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 main main my my main issue that I, I slowly kind of became more or less and less comfortable with was his like um his jawbone guard thing. Mm-hmm. So you know it's like yeah he could he could come down and kill something but then uh, I mean unless he like rips it apart with his like hand wings and like feeds it in that way. Uh, I feel like those things would be a hindrance and just like move the food away from his mouth if he tries to like lean down and you know try to take a chomp out of something unless his body is specifically geared to eat things that are relatively cylindrical and not you know people shaped or and and are people shaped (laughs) <laughs> it's just like, what does this dragon eat? Hot dogs only. <laughs> Hot dogs and cows if he stands them on their butt first. Because, uh, yeah, I tried to find the, the closest other... Or the closest other thing that kind of resembled this was um, Dungeon Dragons' Black Dragon. So it, too, has horns that start from... Uh, just behind its like its eyes and it comes forward in front of its mouth uh, but why I don't take as much why I don't get so weirded out by the black dragon's design is that if you look at a reference to Tiamat um, in which she has all the representations of the dragon on her face uh, the horns kind of come the horns kind of come out, and then they, um, and then they they splay outward. So it's more it's mm-hmm. white, you know, it's whiter. Whereas, you know, this green guy, his 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 horns, his lower horns actually bend inward and come forward in a more like lance like motion, or like a sorry a halberd type motion. Mm-hmm. So it just doesn't it does it doesn't scream to me that it would it would allow for him to eat <laughs> very much. Maybe it doesn't eat. I mean, look at that belly, so trim. So that was the other thing, and that's the reason why I wanted um, why why I wanted to wait for Raphael to get on, which you know I hope he's all right because he's not responding to anything. Maybe something else came up at work. But because he's actually played through this expansion, and even though I, you know, I, I give it's been a while, so I, I grant him the fact that he might have forgotten a lot about it. Um, I've seen a couple cinematics, and this guy looks like he was maybe the like the big bad of that expansion. Mm-hmm. But if I've learned anything from like the Skyrim dragons, uh, I actually don't remember a lot. <laughs> from that lore but there was something in my in my memory that's triggering that says that those dragons didn't actually eat anything it's more like they siphoned life off of what they killed which is Hmm. why they had this essence that the dragonborn could like also siphon from that dragon you know like they they only existed because this one big guy was resurrecting them from other life forces and so they would go through kill stuff and you know, also suck their life forces out. I don't know if I remember them sucking life forms. I think the Dragonborn did that, but I do remember them being immortal. So they definitely like they didn't they didn't need to eat because they're I don't know the lore. If I remember correctly, that they're all like the children of the Time God. That's also a dragon. So they're just kind of outside of time. Yeah. So I guess that would. So yeah, so it would come down to lore reasons to more or less justify its, you know, its, it's design. It's designed to me, yeah. So I, I kind of wish that I didn't, I wasn't so, you know, I didn't pay so much attention in science class and stuff like that because when you see something like that, it kind of ruins the 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 magic for it. I don't know. And those nipple horns are <laughs> what's getting me right now. I can't. I can't. <laughs> like, that, those are weird. Yeah. What the fuck is it? A sea urchin? I can't think of. Because, like, 
I can't think of many times in which it would need to chest bash something. It's a belly flop and it just like rolls around on the ground on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just does that thing that um, the giant spider she loved tried to do to Sam. <laughs> Just yeah. Just just crush him. <laughs> um, but to to the to the credit of the design, though, I feel like even though a lot of the spines are relatively like, I feel like a lot of them are overkill. Like what you said earlier, like the back spines, like where are they growing from? Um, it does look very well protected from a lot of sources of damage. <laughs> Um, against what? Other dragons. <laughs> the only other thing that those could be, <laughs> that those could be, I guess a giant might also have a really hard time finding a club purchase besides its like neck area. But that's the other thing too, is that, you know, those horns are, are very attack oriented, right? So... A lot of the other horns that you would see in other renditions of like a European dragon, for example, a like Maleficent and uh, the the red dragon, all those horns kind of go backwards. And in my assumption, it's to kind of defend, you know, it's a lot like um, deer antlers or something and that it could be used for offense, but it's also to kind of protect the neck. <laughs> you know, they can kind of just like lean their head back and then it's just... Um, guardrails <laughs> so there's some extra layers but this guy you know his 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 upper the upper horns on his head are more like bull horns and then i guess the lower horns could be more like axes like he could like swing his head from side to side and just like morning star something <laughs> I like the, like they're like giraffes fighting. Yeah, like giraffes fighting. <laughs> Everyone forgets that giraffes are also quite violent. Um So what do you what do you think about the forward facing style of horns? Cuz there's a part of me that thinks that it's kind of redundant in the sense that it already has really scary teeth and it also has a projectile that it could potentially just breathe out of its face so what why would you need you know why would forward facing horns be a thing that a dragon would develop Is... maybe it's just because it doesn't have good arms it's got these like long wing things which are all like flattened pancaked things or they're just like way too bony and so what those things really are it's like its own little headrest Hmm. So it's like built-in pillows. You can just kind of like lay there. <laughs> also, the fact that they're curved, that they curve outward from from the face or from the mouth, uh, I could also see that they could it could be used for like a um, like to kind of move st like whatever it kills. It could also just move it around, so it doesn't have to use its like wing its wing claws, its dew claws. <laughs> To move it around yeah i don't know i don't buy it like, uh, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> birds don't have all those that like i don't know face horns to move shit they just use their like their talons the back feet thing that's true they just use you know their beak <laughs> yeah so i don't know this kind of like multi and they're not like long enough to like stab with because like the moment you stab then you're just in the face <laughs> So like, I guess the best that this is, it's making a cage so that something with an even bigger fucking mouth can't bite on top of it. But if it had a bigger mouth, I feel like it would crush it. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, I think that its head wouldn't be the thing. Like, it would go for the neck anyway if it had a mouth that big. Yeah, and which it has a, a fair amount of nasty little spines along the neck. Yeah. So that would suck. <laughs> But I guess it all, it does come back to, like, when you start ticking off all these boxes of, like, well, it might be this, but nah, because it's that way, then maybe it's not that, so we'll just mark that off. It does kind of all boil down to maybe this dragon is 
just immortal. It doesn't need to eat, and so all of its design is geared solely toward an engine of war. So all of its headdress is nothing but offense. Its spines are so that if something jumps down or if it has to roll over on something, then it destroys everything that way. I mean, there's so many ways that if this is just some immortal being that, like, there's some, like, strange conscious design where they want this thing to look dragon-like or in a certain way... Because if not, and if it's just engineered for random damage and stuff, <laughs> like, really, it could be some floating potato that shoots out lightning and fire and stuff out of, like, various, like, nipple-like holes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it doesn't even need a face. It's just immortal. And if it has absorbed things, all the better to be this, like, nasty sponge monster. Yeah. And, like, if we're worried about it being eaten by stuff, sure. It can uh, be like a morning, spar, uh, morning star and sponge combo, where it's just got bony protrusions coming out of any little, like, spot. I don't know. Or maybe the Elder Gods are just really weird, and so when they're like, I want it to be dragon lark, uh, but it doesn't need any of these. We gave it a butthole because if we thought it'd feel lonely if it didn't have a butthole like the other mortal creatures. Gross. It needs a face and a mouth, even though it doesn't need anything. Weren't, it doesn't need to breathe fire. So. Weren't the Elder Gods in Elder Scrolls actually, weren't they kind of messed up? Like, isn't that the reason why Vivek existed? Like, he wasn't a real god, right? He was just kind of a thing that the actual gods created and made him think he was a god, right? Something like that? Mm, no, uh, not exactly. Uh, mm, they're crazy lore, and you can do lots of reading. But... <laughs> I used to know all this at one point in time, and then it's been like 13 years since I played Morrowind, so... Yeah, the Elder Gods, if we're going by that lore and stuff, is really just the dreaming of one being. And that to become a god, when you become a god, you realize that you're a part of this bigger thing that's dreaming you up. And you somehow, it's like you, you manage to stay in that sweet spot of lucid dreaming that you don't exist and you can change everything in this because you're part you are everything but you remain you keep enough of your own identity that you're cool with it and you get to stay yourself elsewise you you do like so many other lucid dreams and you just wake up so uh i don't think they get into like the fact of elder, elder gods being that crazy or weird but they could be my dreams are strange sometimes <laughs> i don't remember this like sponge monster that shoots out things and is full of spines and maybe some wings so it can fly but uh you know what i just came up with it so it's got to be in there somewhere see so, yeah, i just sent you another angle for the this crazy end game dragon and i also sent you a draco lich mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So hopefully, because uh, the Dracolich I threw in there, because that's my example for like the um, the Elder Scrolls is like traditional horn style in which it like could you know defend the neck or just like prevent other things from. It also just looks cool. <laughs> like I like how they're um, they're segmented like. Um, not like bamboo, but like a um, like a palm tree. You know how when yeah. it loses its like things and it cut becomes like really like serrated. Mm -hmm. Where is my big picture? There it is. It's a dracolich. Go away. Which is weird to think that a dragon might in that world might grow not like it loses cells but it like builds on top of it like a tree does <laughs> so if you were to cut a dragon's horn in half or like down the whatever in half then you can yeah. actually see like rings <laughs> oh man this dragon is 13 rings old <laughs> oh man look it's like it ate a whole lot of peasants that year what is the silliest thing you've seen on a dragon beyond 
nipple spikes, nipple spines, sp spinnipples. <laughs> At the moment, if you guys haven't checked, uh, seen, uh, I think, Iguana Mouth, uh, she does these like weird, or she, they, they do this, uh, these weird drawings on Tumblr of dragons and like their different kind of hordes. Um, but there was, I think the weirdest thing I've seen on a dragon was one of this dragon that liked to hoard 80s merch stuff and it was wearing a fanny pack <laughs> and like i don't know high top sneakers with like those like scrunched down but really high socks that was pretty terrible <laughs> I'm not but, like that's weird i don't think it i don't think it's not good not good with it but you know if you're immortal and strange why not but for answering this in serious ways really i don't know um, I'm not too certain. Like, I don't like, I'm cool with it. I'm down for them to being a little bit weird and strange. Maybe, maybe that's why people hunted them. Cause they were like, what is this? Why <laughs> is this? We must open this up for science. Um, I'm going to send you two. Yeah, I'm going to send you two other images of different um, Elder Scrolls dragons released in the same patch that I have dubbed. What have I dubbed them? I've dubbed them. Lewis and Clark. <laughs> I've dubbed one Chin Club Tail and the other one Beardy. So let's see if you can find out why I call them Chin Club Tail and Beardy. Is it the name tags? It's gotta be the name <laughs> tags. <laughs> oh, I also sent you Shovel Lip. Right. Is that one not supposed to? Really? <laughs> so Shovel Lip, Beardy, and Chin Club Tail. Are all different ones? Yeah. Well, Chin Club Tail is one is one dragon. Beardy is another one, and then Shovel Shovel Lip. Shovel Shovel Lip. Shovel Shovel Lip. Oh, I think I sent you two Chin Club Tails. Let me send you Beardy. <laughs> um. But I'm also going, I'm leading up to a thing because when I did, when I was trying to set up a good time for Raphael, uh, very quickly he did impart some, some knowledge upon me that I thought was actually really interesting. Plus I've ignored like this culture of dragon for, for quite a while. Um, so hmm. now I've sent you Beardy. It reminds me of like narwhals and stuff. I like they have like sky snow that they have or ice packs that they have to carve through. <laughs> Maybe that's how dragons get their hordes. That's why they they all have these. They're actually actually burrowing creatures, and they have to dig their own tunnel out with their face. You. And that Spikey's club tail is just to be on the back end if anything is coming in while they're working. And like, hey, no, back out. Business in session. Yeah, I don't know. Like, the only one, which I'm not sure what this one is. Shovel beard? <laughs> yeah, that's shovel, that shovel lip. Shovel lip. Oh, on the top side? Okay, okay. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Like, I like the idea of these things being very giraffe-esque that just fly around and wiggle their head about and attack things. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a. Like, I do think you remember it's a... that game? Uh, what was it? Hey, you were, like flew around on ostriches with lances. It might have just been called Lancer. Oh yeah, right? I have that as a Game Boy game. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible, and you can have like little wings. You're on this like ostrich thing i think it's called joust guy. actually joust 
that does make sense. <laughs> so you have like this lance, and you like charge at other guys that also have lances. But what if like someone needs to like remake this with dragons, where you fly around with like these dragon bodies and their wings, but then you have this like big old noodle head that like you get to like make awesome with different kind of horns and spikes and stuff and it just flops around you gotta like <laughs> flap it about so it just like whacks the other guys that sounds more like a like a like a like a metroid villain or like a super mario like you have to dodge its head in order to jump on its body type villain <laughs> <laughs> you could yeah sure i mean i don't think it, i don't have a problem with it but the other thing too go. that I um, that I kind of want to point out is that um, to your credit, though, all all four of these dragons that I've shown from Elder Scrolls Online um, all use the same format of um, two legs and then two um, arm arm wing limbs. Arm wing limbs. Right, yeah, <laughs> it sounds like an elven name. Oh, have you <laughs> have you met with Arwing Limb? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you're rocking it with uh, the various like names for these creatures: club tail, shovel face, <laughs> shovel beardy, <lip>. shovel lip. <laughs> shovel lip. I want those to be my elf names. Shovel lip. Like, those are a part of like Santa's elves. Those would be a part of like the um. The dirty grunge elves, like the river elves, or whatever the I don't wh which which elves are the grungy elves. So there was like the high elves. So there's like the high elves, the the like the normal like ubiquitous elf, and then there wasn't there like a lower class elf that <laughs> yeah the wild elves. They were I think called like grugach or something. So like grunge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and. I'm really excited to know what your name is. It's got to be something really floral and elegant, right? Mm -mm, shovel lip. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> well, maybe that's the Shatter Kai. Uh. <laughs> Shatter Kai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there are different kind of elves if you read into it in certain systems, and they had weird piercings. So, like, yeah, shovel lip, why not? I think they unfortunately retconned that in 5.0, but I do remember that being a thing in, in 3.5. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so what, um, so with all these, with all these, like, what I feel to be, like, exaggerated facial features, um, or at least exaggerated in comparison to, like, the, um, the D&D, &D, like, blue and red dragon, where those, mm -hmm. those chin spikes are a lot less, they're more, they're more mace-like and not morning star status. Um, uh, Raphael... Uh, enlightened me to the fact that they took a lot of influence based on where elsewhere like what the the cultures that elsewhere kind of um portrays uh one of the things is a lot of um like uh cambodian culture as well as well as a bunch of other um asian cultures in there and so for that uh he showed me like what one of their dragons looked like and it was just crazy how exaggerated their um, their facial features were in that scenario. I'm gonna try to send that to you, or you can also look up your own version. But I shall send you what I have as well. Mm -hmm. yeah it was um and then it was there there's also a tree that has the same the same the same designation of the the dragon the cambodian dragon tree um and it was weird because i don't know if they okay. they designed and uh, the chicken or the egg thing kind of came up where I was like, did they design their dragon after the tree or did they name the tree after the dragon design? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wish I knew someone who knew because that, that type of a question really 
really is the type of thing that really does interest me. Yeah, but unfortunately, the Khmer Rouge dealt a, <laughs> dealt a heavy blow on all that kind of thought. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Um, I don't know. I mean, but with as, as exaggerated as that is, I actually I actually do like that concept because it really portrays. Like, I'm sure like they like the the cultural significance of it has a lot of different meaning. But to me, as an outsider. That thing looks like that looks very like real perfect, strong, sturdy, nice rhino horn, man. That thing can just charge into like a ship or something and just ruin someone's day. Right. <laughs> the fact that every other spine on its head faces forward makes it so that it's just like it's just like a cheese grater after that, you know? The main oh, yeah. main damage and then just a bunch of smaller damage that's really hard to repair. There's a fish. Uh, let's see if I can find what the hell that it look it looks like. But there's a fish that fit, that like swims vertical, like that. Not any of these guys, but uh. But that's what the, uh, this, uh, these designs remind me um, uh, of. And if they're basing it off of those, because those kind of had a, there we go. OK, what are you guys? Or fishes. <laughs> what are those? <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull up an or fish. So those guys don't for the most part, swim horizontally. That's not usually how they go. They kind of swim vertically. Interesting. I think that'd be and interesting like, if they, if the the original people that dreamed that dreamt up this dragon saw the fish first. So it went fish, dragon, tree. Or if they saw the mm -hmm. fish, they thought that fish was a dragon, then they named the tree after the, they were like, Hey, this tree has a really generic name, so let's rename the tree to more, <laughs> more identify to this this sea dragon that we saw. That would be a really cool origin story, I think. Yeah, and I think I think that's somewhat of a modern take uh, on like the origin of the dragon design in that area, or dragons in general. Um, that maybe the people that were that were creating these like uh, Chinese dragons, which explains a little bit. Uh, of the like the connection to water that like these huge swimming serpent things at least one or two of them that were caught or seen or washed up on shore were like really amazing and strange and they're like man that's got to be i don't know this has to be something more than a fish <laughs> and then it like got changed uh from story to story on exactly what it was and getting combined with different different things but these ore fishes uh, and they're like their head tendrils look really close <laughs> to Cambodian dragons, gotta say. I'm gonna look up where they're from. The ore fish? Yeah. I think they exist all along like the eastern coast because I think the Japanese have a tale about a dude like ringing, like wrenching one of those out of the ocean and then using it as a sword. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sure they I'm sure they have a wide berth, but they're rare I think now. Yeah. Um I do want to point out though that um in my in my in my weirding out over that over that other green ESO dragon. It's weird, like, uh, it's reflective, <laughs> reflectively, it's kind of weird that I'm super accepting of, like, the, like, the, the excessive size of, like, the horn on the, on this, you know, Cambodian dragon and the chin thing on, on chin, <laughs> chin club tail, but, mm -hmm. you know, I'd be, I'd be so, uh, the, the horn structure on the green dragon would rub me so wrong. On the green dragon? Yeah. Oh, on, on like a, the, the elsewhere. Yeah, green on the dragon elsewhere thing. green dragon. 
Ah, just because it's a cage around its entire fucking face. <laughs> like, if those, like, the, the two big ones that are on the lowest parts, if they didn't look like they belonged on, like, t connected to the, like, the cheekbones, and they were, like, connected to the, the bottom jaw, then I think we'd all be good. We'd be happy. But no, they're wiggle monsters, and someone <laughs> needs to come up with, uh, a wiggle dragon game where they just fly at each other and like wiggle, <laughs> wiggle dragon game. uh yeah. they might i mean there's a bunch of different games that have that kind of a physics thing out there <laughs> um i think the other thing that would also work better for my mind is if those if those lower jaw horns weren't attached to the cheekbones but were attached to the lower jaw itself so it moved with the lower jaw yeah um the the other sort of because like you know there's other there's real life creatures that have things that look like that but most of them move and most of them are insects <laughs> so like the big mandible things you know usually it's used to they move so that it helps either draw food closer to the mouth or it holds it in place so that you know another another um, limb can come out and just kind of take chunks off of the, <laughs> off of the body it's holding in place. Um, but there's another kind of creature that's not a dragon, but I wanted to inter I wanted to throw it in here just because it, it also has um, large large offensive slash defensive structures. I don't know how defensive these structures are. Um, where is that one so I can minimize it? But it's the Final Fantasy Behemoth. Mm. So this dude has like bombastic horns that um I never I never I guess I never really closely looked at the at the image but um it's not attached to his head actually it's it comes more out of the neck <laughs> and I think that's a really it's an interesting distinction because that means that it can kill whatever it needs to kill but it can also just kind of like keep its shoulders where it where it's at and then like lower its head so that it can like mm. eat on whatever it killed plus the fact that it's if it's if it's aligned with the neck then that means it's really in line with the spine which means that its ramming power is like really stable because it's not attached to something, you know, as that's as flimsy as like a neck or something. It's just a direct line to its to its center. Which which version of Behemoth? I mean, so the two that I, I the two that I have up are the Final Fantasy fifteen one, which is probably the most recent rendition of it. Unless I'm super out of date and there's a Final Fantasy sixteen, I don't think so. Uh, and Final Fantasy nine. Hmm. Hmm. Just because I wanted the differentiation of one that's an actual like grease pencil, or I don't know what medium they use to make that, but um, Final Fantasy IX is really traditional. That second one on the left is the one that I have up. Interesting. Gross. <laughs> the King of Beasts, the Behemoth. Designers are weird. <laughs> yeah, and then speaking of weird designs as far as Final Fantasy is concerned, um, Bahamut, their rendition of the King of Dragons is actually really is interesting as it's changed over their their gamut. And I actually like the the um, the liberties that they took with this thing, whereas D and D was very safe with how Bahamut looked. <laughs> so the two that I have up are from Final Fantasy X and from Final Fantasy IX. Hmm. And I'll... <clears throat> but yeah, so... It's interesting because Final Fantasy IX didn't feature eyes so much, but it also didn't need them because <laughs> it just destroyed everything in the, like in a path in front of it. And then Final Fantasy X was probably the most um, decadent <laughs> designed one. Yeah. 
Just a bit. <laughs> Weird times, man. But I think it's interesting how they stuck the um, the more Middle Eastern and um, Indian sort of symbols of like the the ring yeah, it looks in like the back. Garuda. That's crazy. So, uh, damn it! I had one last question. Um, Oh, damn it. I had one last question to close it out and I forgot what it was. Um, it was something along <laughs> the same lines of like what <laughs> what uh... okay, so in in the same vein of like when you were when you were talking about the troll, like the armored trolls and like, you know, I asked this again with the Griffins, but uh, what's one thing that someone could add to a dragon that is absolutely unnecessary and would and would make you think like, why would you put that on? <laughs> That's unnecessary. Hmm. Let's see. I don't know why oven mitts are the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I don't think like, I've seen that very often. So we're going to leave that off the table. Because it's not like a usual, like how people love to shove armor onto like griffins and stuff. Because That's... That's awful bizarre. Or I guess as a, um, as a quick little pretext, like what what's something that you have seen in media that's that was added to a dragon? You're just like it didn't really need that. You know what? It, it never, it never really bothers me, or I haven't seen very much where they've put things on dragons. I think they're pretty, pretty good about not doing things. Like uh, you have your gripes about like these weird bone structures and how they can eat and how they've been designed. But for the most part, like I think I want to give a little bit of artistic freedom on those. I just don't know. I don't know. They're like strange immortal creatures. Um, but when I start thinking, like I think like uh of the dragon like that's weird it's usually when they're like four-legged things and then all of a sudden it's like the way that it uses its leg becomes like human hands and it's really bizarre <laughs> i like that i don't know it's like nightmares hmm. just because like the angles that you have to move things are they're kind of weird a little bit to me same about like if we if like i don't know like, I loved How to Train Your Dragon, but it was kind of really funny to me watching um, watching it switch back and forth between, like, I don't know, a bird, uh, a lizard, a cat, a dog. Like, Yeah, because he had little, like, gecko hands where they weren't exactly, like, hand. Like, it couldn't really manipulate things really well with its hands, but it was, like, cute and dopey, like, stumps. Cute and dopey stumps. Um, so that I think that's kind of weird. I don't think I've I hardly ever see armor on dragons. But again, I don't like. I think if we go back to a lot of the lore of like where the dragon is weakest, uh, like you have to give a lot of space on the tops of their bodies for the wings to work. So you want to protect the under part from dangerous things. So again, they're wearing weird armored uh, overalls or aprons. <laughs> I delved into um, some World of Warcraft lore, never having played the game, but I thought the story of um, Deathwing was actually pretty cool in the sense that it went through this like corruption sort of transformation thing where it had so much like energy in its body it started to deteriorate. So he had um, he had this armor put on, you know, like grafted onto him, not really to give him protection, but just to hold his body together. <laughs> So I thought, that, I thought that was a really cool like excuse for why this dragon would even have metal attached to it when really its scales should be good enough. Mm. Um, yeah, I think I, I do agree with you that like I, I do enjoy artistic liberties with dragons. Like otherwise, we wouldn't have Final Fantasy X Bahamut over here. Um, I don't know Nine's face. Ooh, that was a weird one. <laughs> I like it. I thought it was. So simple but i think simple is good when your graphics are real low uh, <laughs> the 
while while you were talking, I kind of came up with my own little thing of what I thought would be un like weird and unnecessary on a dragon but the two medias in which i've seen them made them cool enough to be acceptable in my head and that's um Yu-Gi-Oh and digimon and that's adding guns to the to the dragons in various places so Yu-Gi-Oh had the um i think it's just the revolver gun dragon uh, god i don't remember what it's what its actual name is called anymore and i have the card but uh you know it's just this it's just this drag, this me mechanical dragon body with one like it, both arms are just two big ass cannons, and its head is just one long revolver barrel. <laughs> and then oh. um, Digimon kind of did the same thing, except instead of like where its like upper upper muzzle, upper snout would be, it would just be a you know cannon looking thing, or they would replace you know an arm with like. You know, just a straight up cannon or something like that. It was always it was always interesting, but it was like kind of uh, not un I wouldn't say unnecessary. It was overkill, <laughs> or I guess those are somewhat the same things, but I think those have two different connotations. Mm. I don't know. I'm having a good good head moment of like really stupid like dragon um but the again the wavern design that people seem to get fussy about but if its feet were just like holding holding two guns <laughs> <laughs> yeah pew pew <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's terrible i think that looks like oh my god what you do i think that looks adorable actually <laughs> See, there you go. Proved you wrong. <laughs> Tyler approved. It's just... Artistic liberty. <laughs> See, artistic liberty is good. It's just, you know, I'm allowed to have I'm allowed to have a sour opinion about it for, you know, three seconds, and then I get over it, and it's it's fine. That's why I, that's why I want to have these talk shows so I can at least express my my two-minute disinterest, and then I can just vomit my my love for these <laughs> little designs. Um, oh, one thing I did want to pick your brain about, though, was that because you your parents read you uh, read to you um, the uh, what was the entire collection called? Uh, they I know they read to you uh, Lord of the Rings. Um, Mm -hmm. Also, The Hobbit. Also, The Hobbit. Also Actually, the Hobbit. the Hobbit is what they read to me, and then I uh, read The Lord of the Rings. Ah, uh, okay. I thought they. I thought they did all of them. <laughs> um, I was a big boy. <laughs> but um, but smog in general. So, were you? Did you ever see any other depiction of that character before having read uh, having the book read? Or no, I didn't. It was. It was straight the book, and then I don't know. And then, then all the movies and pictures and stuff. So the first, the first time I ever saw that dragon was in the Ralph Bash Kids thing. No, not the Ralph. Um, maybe that was the artist. But hmm. was the first, the first um, Hobbit anima um, animated film, and then. Then I read the book, and then the the most recent film came out. <laughs> yeah, that smog, where he was more lion like and yeah, kind of crazy. okay. Fine. So before you saw any other rendition of it, though, what what was in your head about what this about what this dragon looked like? This worm. I'm trying to remember the story. And I feel like there was a picture in my book that had it. Really? Or maybe they were just described. I don't know. Well, because in the map, wasn't there a wasn't there a red dragon in yeah. Quill? I think so. I feel like uh... Yeah, I think the same artist that 
does that directed that film also did flight of dragons but not the last unicorn am i stupid on that one or did he do all three i don't know i wish i remembered that kind of trivia but yeah i like it is the long like the wiggle uh kind <laughs> of uh, like combination i remember correctly and then how did you feel about its about its transition through the different mediums into the first hand drawn animated film and then the the what everyone knows today as the animated as the I think Hobbit. there's moments in that hand drawn animation one where I like it and I like what they did uh uh cuz there's this like when it has the moments of feeling very bat like uh, I think, I think that there's something special in that, or I enjoy how that one looks. Like, let me see if I can pull up. I don't know. In like this image here, oh, it's a GIF. That's nasty. <laughs> uh, but I kind of like that one. I think that's kind of like ferocious. But the the parts where it's more like, I don't know, this kangaroo cat monster. I'm like, eh. I could do without. I enjoyed that film's representation of his personality. Like, there's one mm. scene in which he just lets loose uh, a gout of fire to just kind of try to shotgun the Hobbit out of existence and just melts like a third of his horde. And it just goes to show you that he doesn't really, he doesn't really care about his treasures as long as he has them. <laughs> he's, mm, he's okay mm -hmm. with it. Um... And then any thoughts on the most recent rendition of Smog? I like that they gave gave some thought to how to give it some character. Like the the strange, like, I don't know, curvatures of its mouth, how they made the eyes kind of big to emote, uh, to be able to emote things. I think those, those are done good. And it's like not pretty. It's kind of like a little bit derpy in a way. At, at certain moments uh, that I enjoy. And also, like, and also to drive home, they evolved it from something that's in your imagination to a four-legged creature to a two-legged creature with arm wings. <laughs> hmm. Which, I like that. The arm wings make sense to me. The four-legged is... <laughs> there's something, there's just too much going on. Like, I know bees and stuff do it, and beetles, but they just kind of, I mean, they have gigantic fucking wings. Plus, I, I, I like how they're, um, the artistic direction for that one, they went with that design for the, for the dragon, and then they just ran with it. And I'm talking specifically when he was, dr like, nearly drowned in gold, and then he shook it off in midair. Like, mm, that mm -hmm. was probably the most beautiful scene that I've ever seen of like a dragon recovering from you know counter counter attacking from uh from an from a some kind of an offense <laughs> yeah oh yeah it, and then the war in the north dragon i liked it that like, guy that guy it, that guy's the doing like human shit it's weird <laughs> but there's so much about this like flat weird lizard and the fact that like he feels like a different person like he has his own personality his own body type like he gets body shamed at the dragon gym <laughs> like, he's, like, you know, he's cool with it he's gonna oh he owns the like the the witch king's uh palace now i think yeah because right. when you when you were saying earlier how you like more like the um the bearded the bearded dragon look or like you know the more kind of gecko-y kind of head shape like that's the one that kind of popped in my head but i forgot where i'd seen that that mm -hmm. face and i think he does a good job oh, they did a good job in that one just like they did a good job with the new version of Schmog. uh that it it feels like a different person uh or a different creature or as i say like a i think a lot of dragons just feel very generic that that even in like I don't know, you don't get too far into it with like things like Dungeons and Dragons because everyone's supposed to make their own like versions and characters and you get to know them in your like imaginary headspace and you don't ever see them. Mm -hmm. But 
Like they differentiate so much by color because it's not like, oh, that dragon has like a shovel lip. <laughs> and that dragon has a bit of a pot belly. And this one needs to shave. Like <laughs> I think I think you you kind of are just cool with just like, oh right. Um, it's different because it's a different color and not these like little subtleties of like, oh no, this is its own its own dragon. And they're all the although they're both red dragons, this one feels different from the other one. Yeah. Like I guess I've been playing D and D wrong. I gotta like start explaining my dragons with cleft lips and. Uh, <laughs> well, I think you can, lip. but then you also run the risk of um, sapping all of their all of their fear factor out until you do the first bit of damage. I guess. <laughs> that seems like a good good exchange. I like it. <laughs> Aye, they call him Shovel Lip. He lives up there in the hills and he's been terrorizing our sheep. He just scoops them up and carries them away. I think it's a good thing because then you think you're an amazing adventure and you're like, yeah, I'm going to go kill me a Shovel Lip. And then, soon enough. Mm-hmm. All right, well... What thing would you want to see on a dragon? Like if someone were like, "Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add something to a dragon." Um, I mean, to be fair, I feel like the, I'm gonna call it the medium, but uh, the medium has been around long enough for people's artistic licenses to go pretty freaking wild with it. Um, that there is not a lot that hasn't that hasn't already been done, but. The one thing that I don't, so I'm going to kind of tweak that question a little bit and say that the thing that I don't see enough that I've seen twice in mediums is a, um, uh, uh, what's the, the, the Indian punching dagger thing and how it sometimes comes in a, in a guitar. Yeah. The guitar where it comes in the expandable variant. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. So in, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was Dragonheart. Um, he had, he had one of those and you like pin down a bunch of people with it. Uh, and then in, I think it was. Are you talking with the tail? Sorry. Yeah, with the tail. So clothes is just this big club looking thing, but then he can open it up and it's more like a scorpion type of a thing or he can just, you know, pin stuff down like a fork. Hmm. Um, and then the other one was uh, Power Rangers, I think. Like Godzilla or the Mecha Godzilla kind of came close with its like drill tail, but I don't think it ever really got anywhere else than like drill tail. But I remember in one of the Power Rangers things, like it had a alternative use for its tail. And I don't know. I like that. I like that a tail could have more utility than just like a large sweep. Like, mm. if it could also be used to, like, pierce and stuff, then that would be a cool addition. Because um, other than okay. that, like, if you wanted to strap, like, cannon backpacks to make it kind of like a Blastoise-looking thing, like, you know, that kind of falls into the Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, Digimon thing, where it's like, yeah, that looks cool, but does it really need it? I mean, it still has all this, like, other cool powers and strength and stuff. Mm. So I think oh. uh, I think tail claw. <laughs> it's it's just subtle enough that it's just underused. Okay, okay, it's a weird one. I, <laughs> I, I think I don't know. I wouldn't have ever thought of like a. Yeah, I think that's a that's a weird one to me, but not terrible. It was like okay, I've seen it. But you're right. It is kind of I guess underused. I think it's underused partially or I'm, I think there might be a factor that it's underused because it's people hate animating tails like whether you're traditionally animating or you're 3D animating like it's just an annoying it's an, it's an annoying limb to animate because <laughs> it, it can go everywhere so it just takes up like 6,000 frames just to move it across the screen <laughs> 
All right, and with that, I think we'll wrap it up there. Um, I'm still really disappointed that I wasn't able to get um, Raphael online because, you know, he's he's a he's a medieval history he's a medieval history dude. So he's gotta have like gotta have so much insight on like a lot of stuff that we were talking about. Yeah, whatever. Oh he well. Chime in on the Wyvern debate. Oh, that's right. We can do a part two. Dragons v. Wyverns. <laughs> two. Um, hair on dragons? Yes or no? Actually, that is um, a very minor debate, but it is a debate that people have where it's the scaled dragons versus the furred dragons. So that's a thing. <laughs> that's a thing we could do. <laughs> yeah. We got a lot of possibilities. And if... Uh, and eventually, some nerd is going to complain at us, and we're going to have to do it all over again. <laughs> or you know, some nerd is going to like, love it and going to give us more science. God, I hope we get nerds that are angry about this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many people have ever said that in their life. I hope we get some angry nerds. I don't know. I guess a lot of, a lot of people. I feel like Trump has said it at least once. Thank you even for coming on and spending... I forgot to set a timer, but I'm sure it's like at least 30 minutes over the hour that I that I, that I ask you on here for. Yeah, just a bit. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I got to draw some really unfortunate dragons on this one. I thought there I, I thought there were at least three really cool ones. Um, and I'll try my best to spend some time and edit this thing and get it up on YouTube. So once again, you can always come to, you know, you can always come back to this channel to watch more episodes, or you can hit me up on Twitter to find out when I go live next at Foxstar underscore, and you can see more works by Even on his Instagram and maybe Twitter, <laughs> where you can reach him. I'm not on Twitter. <laughs> But you're welcome to find me on Instagram at even star long. Nice. One of these there, days, I'm one of these days, I'm gonna make little name plates like on the news, and then we don't have to keep doing that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I get to change it where it's like I get to be a demonologist one day, and another one uh, one day it'll just like disgruntled man with sandwich. In it. <laughs> I win. <laughs> Lepre <laughs> leprechaun eyewitness. <laughs> yeah. All right, and so with that, I'll see you all, or hopefully we'll see you all next time. Laters. Bye-bye. Have some weird dragons. <laughs>